the, the Lord is going to have his church. Don't worry about what, what people talk about church. The Lord is going to have his church. Okay? Based on the triune God. That the foundation of that church is Christ Jesus. And the triune God is present. The Holy Spirit is present when we gather. When we gather in the presence of God, who must be there? The Father God, the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost. So he says his intention, he made you apostle, he made you prophet, he made you, you know, what, evangelist, he made you a shepherd and teacher so that you can build your church or his church. And then we see, the, the, the strange thing that I've seen in this passage, that I've, I've read it over the years, over the years, and look at what he said. All of them are supposed to bring you to one place and one place only. To give to you one thing only. To help you, right? To help you rise and grow into the mature manhood of Christ Jesus. That is it. The mature manhood of Christ Jesus. That is what the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers are to bring the sheep into. Now look at the church. Where is the mature manhood in Christ Jesus? And you tell me they are apostles? You tell me they are prophets? You tell me they are, they are the evangelists? You tell me they are shepherds and teachers? And they cannot produce the life of Christ? They cannot bring the sheep to experience the inner being of Christ Jesus. Quite and time, Sanya. What great madness is that? He says here, his intention was the perfecting and the full equipment of the saints. Look around in the church. If this is what is happening, full equipment, full what? Say so here, full equipment of the saints, his consecrated people. Okay, that they should do the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body, the church. That the church might develop. If you do your work well as a pastor, as a, as a teacher, as an evangelist, as a, uh, a prophet, as an apostle, when you do your work well, here is what's going to happen. The church will develop. Until we all, not some, until we all attain oneness in the faith. There is no Pentecostal faith. There is no charismatic faith. There is no Methodist faith and Presbyterian faith. Oh no, it don't exist. Faith in Christ is faith in Christ. Okay, so here. Ah. Until that we might, that, that, that it might, the church might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate, the epignosis, full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. Full and accurate knowledge of Jesus Christ? Tell me where do we find that in the church? In this end time church, in this month, where do we find the full, the full and accurate knowledge of Jesus Christ? The full? How full is Jesus? And you tell me your, your sheep under you know Jesus? They may know about him. But if you know Jesus, your inner life is transformed. You know Jesus, sin, sin is not your friend, no more. Un unholy living is not your friend, no more. Why? I know Jesus. Ah, listen. He said that it might develop, the church will develop. If the pastors and prophets and evangelist pastors do their job, the church is supposed to develop. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
uh, come to the, in the, for the oneness, attain oneness in the faith, right? And the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than, nothing less, nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. You tell me. Tell, look around in the churches. What is the perfection of Christ in our character, in our conduct, in our attitude? It is not, listen to me, it's not a perfection, all right? That is, that is what attributed to us. That is just, uh, how do you call it? That's a word. Uh, imputed to us. All right? There is a perfection imputed to us. And a perfection that is wrought by the Holy Ghost in our character. Yeah. We are perfect in the perfection of Christ. But the perfection of Christ must be wrought in our character. We have to now walk in it. Not just uh, assume that we are in him, therefore that's, that's, no, no. We have to work it out and it rot out in our character. Yes, God. Enoch walked with God until he was not. Why? He said, no, no, hold on. You can't keep on living here. Come home. Because, because you, you've been transformed. I don't know. If, if, if you don't come home, you won't die no more. <laughs> Oh, yes, God. So Enoch went home, went home because he was transformed. His faith did a marvel of a job in his being. Ah, I tell you. <laughs>